Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the committee. My name is Daniel Burns, and I would like to propose a much needed cyber policy. I call it the Cyber Defense, Education, and Protection Act, or CIDEPA for short. This policy attempts to cover and bolster the current gaps in our cyber defense and strategies of the United States. CIDEPA introduces three main key points of operation. First, creating a brand new standalone cyber force division within the U.S. government. Second, creating a required across-the-board information sharing platform and system for all agencies to use, communicate with, and build on. And lastly, introducing and injecting proper cyber hygiene at an early level in our public education system. These initiatives attempt to cover any gaps within our current stance on cybersecurity, strengthening our position in defense of and in preparation for any scale cyber attack. Now, what is this so-called cyber force I speak of? Well, much like we have a dedicated space force for space-related operations and protections, we should have a dedicated, separated task force that focuses strictly on cyber-related operations. Space Force was branched off the Air Force as a sister branch in a few years ago with the goal of expanding operation in space while creating a show of force in a specific realm. A cyber force would attempt to do just that, but in the cyber realm. This would be a brand new division of our government, branched off as a military department standing on its own. It, it could very well become a proper replacement for Cybercom while being strictly detached from command by the NSA, Homeland Security, and Department of Defense, aiming its focus directly on the defense of the United States and its allies against cyber-related attacks. The goal would not just be to defend against cyber attacks, but also to seek out and prevent potential ones as well. Cyberforce would operate as a separate division, reporting back to the executive branch and therefore the president directly. Reporting needed information at a timely matter. War can be an instant in the cyberspace, and the quickest we can respond, the better chance we have. Ranking officials would be similar to other, oper other military departments. An assigned chief of cy or cyber czar would be appointed to report directly to the executive branch, and therefore the president. A cyber force would attract people of all skill sets relating to the field of cybersecurity, IT, infrastructure security, and almost any vastly related tech field. The positions would be higher paid too, to attract the needed skill set from the private industry. Dedicated career routes will be set up to help make it easier for those already in other positions at other agencies, such as the NSA and Cybercom, to easily transition over. Budgeting, on the other hand, would fall directly under the expansive and massive military budget of the armed forces. And as the conflict shifts to the preferred medium of cyberspace, the need for a dedicated branch to protect and fight back has never been higher. But what does this well-formed government of agencies do without a proper communication? The answer could be a lot simpler than we think. With the creation of a dedicated shared information platform across all agencies, no matter, no longer do we have an excuse not to share critical information. It would also create an easy way for each agency to communicate with each other. A shared database consisting of a multi-level user policy oriented system sharing a mixture of confidential and non-confidential information within each of our agencies. There have been numerous instances where communication breakdown and secrecy have crippled our ability to act, only to discover later that our need to keep every little detail secret within each separate agency is a major hindrance on our ability to act fast in many situations. This system would have to be the most robust, secure, and bulletproof platform we have ever created. It won't be an easy task, and as past government-made systems have shown, this will require an all-hands-on-deck initiative to get this accomplished. This system gives us and developers the ability to build upon the platform over multiple iterations, giving a long lifespan of use among each department. But in the end, this system may very well be the key to preventing any future attacks, not just cyber-related, before they can ever happen. Now on to education. Probably the most critical part of this policy is the education on future generations. Specifically, creating the budget allocation specifically for the education on proper cyber hygiene 
within our nation's public school system. Uh, assigning a specific rotating board of industry professionals to come up with and keep up to date new programs to teach our children during their schooling. Uh, starting with grades K through 12 in elementary school, building up through middle school and rounding out to the high school level, this initiative would bring forth new programs and allocated time for, edu for the education of good cyber practice in our everyday lives. Giving new generations an early start on the current methods and best practices protects not only their age groups, but encourages the sharing of these best practices to their parents, older generations, friends, and family. What is the best method to spread proper cyber hygiene than the generation that is teaching us the most about new technology and how to use it, just as we've done with our parents and grandparents in our ever-evolving technological world? We will rely on the younger generation to guide us ethically, protect us digitally, while we bolster our cyber initiative as a mature yet growing nation. So, the Cyber Defense Education and Protection Act, also known as CEDEPA, bolsters the United States stance in cyber defense, while encompassing the need for future education and ability to compete in a time of need. This policy, like I said, covers three main points of operation. Creating a cyber force division within the, US, within the U.S. government. Creating an information sharing platform for all agencies to build on. And education starting at an early level in our nation's public school system on the importance of quality cyber hygiene. I hope you consider this proposal as a strong starting point in our nation's stance on cybersecurity. This policy builds a foundation for future additions and revisions as cyber attacks, techniques, technology in general become more advanced in our modern data-driven world. Thank you.